Welcome everyone, I'm Zell and this is Late Night with Zell and Staza. We have Staza23 with us. How you doing, Staza? Oh, I'm doing good now. All right, this is something that we're going to try to do fairly often. Uh, no rhyme, reason, or schedule, but we're going to put up a notice on Instagram in the future and we'll try to put up a notice in the little community thing here on YouTube. And... We got some stuff to talk about this week. We had Blade Show West last week, and uh, we've got some new and interesting Todd Knife and Tool stuff. And I think Nick's got some cool stuff, too, down there in Louisiana. Oh, always got cool stuff. <laughs> okay. Is, it, is, the, is everything coming through clearly on your side? Yeah, everything seems to be working pretty good. Uh, seems like things are a little bit slow to swap back and forth, but that's okay. Uh, just, you know, kind of watch our, we'll have to watch our screens and make sure that we get to, uh, you know, don't get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, correct. That's, uh, I'm watching. Just y'all know, um, those of y'all watching, we're doing this as a split, kind of split screen, and it's going to only show us. Uh, the screen of whoever's talking. So, you know, more so we're just going to be talking more so we'll be showing some eye candy in between. All right. So Blade Show West, I don't know how many of you got to go. It was kind of an interesting thing. We're over in Portland, Oregon, which is a interesting place to start with. And uh, the turnout wasn't great. However, it was the first time they've done it there in 10 years. The promoters are trying to get the job done. And uh, they may have dropped the ball just a little bit this first year, but it still turned out pretty good. <laughs> and uh, the, the best part for me was I was able to go to Blade Show and talk to a lot of people in the industry and such like, and a lot of you guys, and not be... Uh, you know, hampered by the crowds just constantly going through like you are in Atlanta. Uh, anything you saw from Blade Show, uh, Staza, that uh, you were interested in? Um, one thing that uh, a, a couple of companies that I've never seen before, uh, well, I've seen them, but just didn't really know too much about them. One of them was Burnside Knives. Um yeah, they they started with that multi grind knife that didn't really do it for me. Uh, but I saw some cool they did. They got a new uh, titanium frame lock that looked pretty interesting. And one other company I don't remember the name, but um, JT JT's Knife Life uh, talked about them, and uh, Blade Banter talked about it as well. Okay, I guess I missed those guys. That's uh, kind of unfortunate. Um. Questions, though. What is that that nice, juicy knife at the bottom right of your screen? This guy right here? Yes, sir. All right. I, here's the deal. I do not know the designer on this knife. Uh, they're supposed to be getting back with me. But there are two cool things. they done an orange peel finish. Hope that's coming through kind of halfway decently on the video. But it's an orange peel finish. And then the coolest thing... And I'll do a high-res video of this just to show. I mean, look at that finish. They have done an honest-to-God hand-rubbed finish on this guy. And overall, it's a pretty cool knife. I don't like whenever they in set in the pocket clips like this, but uh, it seemed to work okay. Another cool thing on this guy is it is internally milled like you would not believe this thing doesn't weigh anything and i'll get more information on who it's by and the such like uh hopefully soon but yeah pretty cool yeah uh that thing caught my eye the moment i saw it and i was like ah just like that that we zephyr you got i was like i don't recall seeing that one did you pick that one up at blade show uh, this, this is Zephyr. Okay. This is another one. Hope I can get the lights on this guy, right? This is a one-off Zephyr, one-off color and Mocha May is, I believe the material that's in it, uh, for the inlay instead of carbon fiber. So Mocha May in here, 
and Mocha May on the pivot collar. And otherwise, it's essentially just a wee Zephyr. But uh, it was one of the one-offs they did with some leftovers from Mocha May from some other project. And uh, I like the Zephyr quite a bit. And I thought, man, I just got to have that. But uh, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, as far as Blade Show West pickups, I guess I should go through that. Uh, we did get you know, your standard Microtech Blade Show knife. It's a full Ultra Tech with a bayonet grind. Uh, nothing extremely special this time, just Blade Show 2018 and bayonet grind Ultra Tech. But, you know, at the price they sell these at Blade Show, super cool. Uh, the only other knife I actually purchased at Blade Show was this guy. And I know there's a bunch of you out there already laughing. Why would I get a Praetorian? Uh, well, I I brought that, uh, or set this other Praetorian out here, the one we had for the pass around group, because I want you to see something. This Praetorian Genesis is a fair amount smaller and a whole lot less ridiculous than the full size Praetorian. Uh, and it's in 3V. I wanted to give that a shot. So, pretty cool there, too. Uh, I don't know, Nick. What are your thoughts on the uh, mid-size and smaller Praetorians? Um, <clears throat> the Genesis looks like the sweet spot. I don't remember. I, I handled one at Blade Show. Um, it, I like it. Um, it's definitely a purpose-built knife, a hard-use knife. And I'll, I'll be honest, 3V is by far my favorite all-around, hard-use, tough steel. Uh, I, uh, speaking of Blade Show, I saw that um, Benchmade had that upcoming fixed blade that I'm, I'm interested in because it's uh, 3V steel. And they said that they couldn't get their testing machine to break the steel. <laughs> so oh. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that that is interesting. Yeah, so I don't know. I went over, had a long conversation with Greg Medford, and it was actually a good conversation, guys. All of you that think that Greg is just this crazy nutcase, well, he kind of is, but he's a really nice guy. Uh, and he ended up, I picked up a Praetorian Genesis in 3V, and my brother picked up a Praetorian Genesis in uh, S35VN. And let's see, other, uh, oh, Blade Show pickups. That's what we were going through. I ended up with one of these. These freaking things are hard to get a hold of. Uh, it, it is the Wii pin, and they don't have any marking on them whatsoever, except right there on the pocket clip where it says Wii. But it's a bolt action pin. Great little action. And last I checked, they're selling them for like 65 or 68 bucks. So, uh, <coughs> If you see these things at Blade HQ or Knife Center or wherever, uh, and you like this style of pen, uh, just buy it. That's that's all there is to it. Uh, there's two different styles. There's one that's got the cutouts like this. One's got some X pattern or something across it. But uh, at sixty-eight dollars, you absolutely cannot go wrong with this thing. And let's see. That were that's all the pickups I had at Blade Show. With the exception of these two knives you're seeing up here. Ha, yeah, Chief, uh, the Praetorians are, are pretty good. I, I'm not a huge fan of this big old dude, but uh, I really, really like this Genesis. Uh, what else? What else? All right. We'll get to this stuff up here later. What do you got up there, Nick, to get a look at today? Um, today... I've, I've been test driving this guy. Um, my first impressions at the, my local shop uh, for the Brower were, I don't know. I just, and I still, I, I don't think it's worth the money uh, for S30V. But I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to go materials only, you know, like this, this wouldn't be worth the money materials only. So it's not always materials. It's, uh, you know, the quality, how well they did it. And there's just some things about this knife that I can't wrap my head around. My OCD kills me because of that huge gap there is between that choil. And then you pretty much have to add 30 more dollars for a deep carry clip unless you want a ridiculous amount of blade sticking out of your pocket. Um, 
So this is something that I've been really, really playing with here. And I, I've been having this one since they originally came out. And this has the orange peel finish as well, kind of like the Wii Night that Zell just showed. And uh, I've been carrying a lot more. I, I stopped carrying it because it, it, this was the old version and it has the uh, old crappy wash and ra uh, race washers in there. But it's, it's a great knife. If you can pick one of these guys up with the older one for like a screaming deal, I'd say get it because it's still a functional knife. It's not going to fall apart and Spyderco will take care of you. This is an excellent knife in M4 steel. Actually, I'm going to tell people that they should void their warranty on that knife and take those little crinkly <laughs> washers out from behind <laughs> the bearings and just throw them away. Or put them in a box somewhere in case you need to send it back to Spyderco. Because you take those little things out and those knives like that work great. <laughs> And yeah. even um, even with them in, and I'm I, I I'm I feel the same way as you because I did do that on um, I don't well, one of the other ones that had it. In, I think my mantra, but until if you like this one hasn't been taken apart yet. This is probably the only knife in my entire collection has never been taken apart, and the action on this guy is phenomenal. Um, but once you do take this apart, yeah, you do need to take them brace washers out because they're garbage. All right, man. So what's that little thing you got down there? It's got the funny colors on it and doesn't look like a knife. Or a... Yeah, there you go. Um, this is the big idea design, uh, kind of like a Rexford rut. It's been out for a while. Um, they don't come with this pocket clip. The guy I bought it from uh, added that pocket clip, and it works just like a rut. You, It's like a frame lock. You press this little thing over, and you slide the blade out, and you can slide it out different things. Um I, I don't like this one as much as the rut because it has a, a, um, a magnet behind here. So it makes it hard to get this out. And that's a razor blade you're messing with. But I will say I'm, I'm, uh, I got one of them Giltec uh, rucks coming. And that looks like a super cool one. Uh, I like these, you know, to save your main blade sometimes on your knife. All right, that, that's pretty cool. I brought that one up because I want to go back over to my screen for a second, and I want to talk about this guy. This is the little one from Ferrum Forge. It's I forget what exactly they called it. I think it's just a retractable razor knife is what they're calling it. But uh, you put an X-Acto blade in it instead of a, one of those razor blades. Slightly harder to get, but uh, the thing's on spring. On a spring... And you have to hold it out to uh, actually use it. So, pretty interesting and more useful than I thought it was going to be. Uh, a lot more useful. Oh. Hey, I'm, I'm looking over the, the comments because uh, I keep forgetting to look over there. And just we, I, I want y'all to know we are looking at them, but we're, you know, we're, we got all kinds of stuff going on at the same time. So, yeah, uh, Oaken's, what is it? Uh, yeah, M4 is awesome still. You just, you just got to have the, the stuff to sharpen it, the equipment to sharpen it. And the Chavez Chub, oh, I'd love to get my hands on one of those. Those look really cool, but I'm sure they're hard as heck to get. The one that Zell's got, I, I, I'm kind of bummed I didn't pull the trigger on that one because um, I didn't realize it was it took a, a, an exacto blade. I would have picked one up. I'm sure they'll probably do another run, right, Zell? <laughs> oh, I'm sure they did. They sold a bunch of those things. Now, I have a question for everybody. As, speaking of all these little razor knives, if you guys out there watching, if you were able to pick up a titanium frame lock or titanium and g10 uh little knife that carried one of those things that flipped well and did its job just like a full-size knife and yeah it might be a little bit expensive but not anything over the top but it would carry like a regular knife instead of the huge things like the milwaukee or the cobalt and all that stuff what do you guys think about that um they got there is a com there is a company. I mean, not a I guess you call them a company that has something kind of like that. 
Uh, to me, the key is that how easy it is to get the blade in and out because that's what kills it for some of the ones I have. Um, like I think the Gerber E8, whatever it is, that little Gerber one is excellent, but you got to unscrew the whole thing to take the blade out, and that's just garbage. <laughs> so the 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 easy accessibility is the key to me, and if that was the key, I'd be all over what you're talking about. Okay, cool. Looks like everybody, uh, most of them in the comments are into it too. And hey, Dylan, how you doing, man? I see that you have a design out there that's uh, almost live with artisan cutlery, and that is super cool. Yeah, uh, Dylan, it, are you the one that produces the one I'm talking about? No, he, he's got a deal with artisan cutlery. I can't remember that. I, type in the name of that knife, man. I can't remember it. Uh, well, I don't want to. Oh, yeah, I can, I can do that split screen. Uh, um, what is it called? Oh, uh, Dylan's here. He can tell us what that knife's called. Oh. Uh, he's got What's up, a, Troy? Hey, oh, yeah, Troy's in. Yeah, Troy's been Our paying show. my light bill. He's been, Troy's been paying my light bills, though. Oh, he has? Yeah, I think he's bought, what, four from me, uh, Troy? Awesome. Yeah. Hey, hey, Troy, I've got that. I don't have it out here, but I have that... Uh, that SNG that was mismarked, I need to sell that thing, okay? Send me an offer. It's one of the ones that was marked, uh, what, CT, CP, CTS 20 CV instead of CPM 20 CV? Yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah, and I need to sell it here pretty soon because I've got a freaking uh, SMF on the way. Yeah, you might want to free up some funds if you got that thing coming. Yeah. Did you get? Did you pick up one of the brand new ones that they they just dropped? Uh, yeah. Oh, you suck. Yeah. Well, well, you know, it's this thing, man. They had the whenever I I got a notification from the guys over at GP Knives, and they had they didn't just have SMFs. They had SMF spear points, full flat ground, in tiger stripe. Yeah. So I custom a little bit, and then I went and bought one. That's what I always do. I always do that. My wife yeah. looks at me like I'm crazy, and I'm saying, oh, "I'm just, I'm not cussing at you. I'm just cussing at the screen." Yeah, there you go. And you know, and the guy, what's his name, over at GP Knives, and that low grumbly voice, he just giggled at me. <laughs> Tyler here with GP yeah. Knives. <laughs> that's that's the guy. <laughs> he just kind of grumbled at a little fun, a little chuckle at me, and I bought the knife. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's how it goes. But uh Oh hey, I wanna I wanna show y'all something. This is this is a pretty cool piece that uh was picked up last blade show. I don't know if I ever showed you Zell. I, I don't know if I ever did the video on it, but check this out. This is uh one of the very I think there was twelve or so of these made or fifteen. This is the um bag knives what's that, the glimpse? folder that he made mm -hmm. well the the custom version of that knife he wanted to make a fixed blade that that looked exactly like it and he he created this so is this, that this is a fixed blade uh mini glimpse okay so i'm seeing it is a steel craft or is it a todd bag no, no, no. this is a todd bag this is an actual custom oh hell Let's see you see the yeah 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 and it's got the lightning strike and just the details that, that he does. And the price tag was very, very reasonable for a bag custom. It's got the cracked ice all along the top right here and all back here. And like I said, for being a bag custom, this thing, lightning strike carbon fiber, I'm not going to say the price, but, and this guy's actually for sale. This is for a buddy of mine. But, oh, you need you need to put that up and <laughs> that's why I said it's for sale. I don't I don't know if it'll ever get posted. <laughs> well here, you know, here's the thing. Uh I've been watching Todd and Mark and the stuff that's going on and, and I don't know any of the the behind the scenes stuff, but Todd's back doing some of his older designs and seeing as how the uh 
the Steelcraft stuff are doing glimpses and all that. I have to wonder if Todd will ever do any more glimpses or bodegas. Yeah, I, I, same here. And to have one that's actually a Todd Beg from before the kerfluffle might be just freaking awesome, you know? <laughs> Look at Troy. See, Troy, I'm trying to help you build the, the collection that you want, buddy. He said, yeah, Sasa got the best knives I own. He said, I got the best knives I own from you recently. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy I was able to help, and I hope I hope you like the ones you got. He got he got a, a good one, too. Um, my buddy from my local shop had uh, that mini grip uh, 20 CV prototype, and Troy picked it up. Oh, cool. I'll tell you what, that's, I can tell you, any, any big time benchmade collectors probably drool over that thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's that nice edge on that. It's a little fat, but it, it, it's not, it doesn't have any uh, distal taper to it. So it had to stay fat. <laughs> yeah. And you did a good job keeping it clean all the way down, not getting wide at the tip. Yeah. Thank, that's thanks to that new system I got. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and there was one you showed, and, and okay, so now we're going to do, like, instruction between Nick and I right here in the middle of a show. There was one of them you did on that Last Knife for Everything video mm -hmm. that didn't have much distal taper on it, and I don't remember if it was your uh, torrent or, yeah, it was that was your torrent. All right, I, I'm going to tell everybody the secret voodoo secret on how to make it not do that. I figured it out after I did it. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'll tell everybody else. So they're not in the dark. All right. Whenever you sharpen a knife like that, that doesn't have any distal taper till it gets right down to the tip. Uh, Nick, can you show them the back of that knife, how the distal taper works? Out? Hold on, let me... it, uh... Yeah. But show them the, the, the spine of the blade. Oh yeah. Yeah where the distal taper goes, it, the knife goes straight down until you get right there to the end, and then it has a whole bunch of taper right right there. Well, the way you sharpen those is you match up your angles at the tip with, uh, with whatever the factory angle is if they didn't get it off real bad. But uh, And you go ahead and sharpen that section all the way down to whatever lapping film or whatever grit you're going to, and then you back up on the rest of the knife and you reset your angles to whatever they sharpened it at there or whatever you want it to be sharpened at there. And then you go through everything. And if you don't goof up and nick it with a stone, whenever you're done, it'll be fully blended and look like consistent all the way down. And it's just awesome. Yeah. Cause uh, the, the big thing that, Nick, that a lot of people don't think about is, is the further that stone gets out, the possibilities of, of an angle changer are happening, um, especially with the Wicked Edge. I'm trying to look at some of the comments. Slicey yeah. Slicey tell me one person that likes that name. Wait. Slicey's in the uh, feed? No, no, he's not. Don't, don't. Okay. Uh, Clay. Um, I just got a grill of mine coming tomorrow. Kingdom Armory. I I've always liked that knife. I never got to handle it. I was trying to find one at Blade Show. The Mini Samaritan, is it called? Some, is that what it's called? Samaritan? Sam whatever. The Kingdom Arm that Kingdom Armory knife is kind of about the size of a Strider PT. Uh, always liked it. The only reason I didn't pick it up is because his first run was plagued with uh, lock rock issues. They fixed it after that, and I just never got around to picking it up again. But always, I've always liked that design. It looks like the almost like Bill the Butcher or whatever it's called. Mm hmm. So that Dylan said he's got that one coming in. Let me oh, know what that, you think about it, buddy. Yeah, no kidding. Let us know because, you know, we like to talk about knives that we ain't even got a chance to put our hands on, too. <laughs> yeah, no joke. Oh, and speaking of, um, my buddy Sean, uh, he. He's sending me a few more loaners. Um, he's the one that sent me those loaners for the last go round, and he's got uh, some cool ones coming in. He's got an out the front that I've never heard of, um, a Perpetua, just so I could check it out. And uh, we did a little trade in, and I got the Mass Drop Ferrum Forge Buck coming in. 
Yeah, that would be cool. That that buck. I, I kind of wish I'd got one, but then I know I won't carry it. So, you know, it's one of those things. Yeah. Now, they made another one. Looked just like the buck, except the blade shape was a little different, called the Duo or something like that. Duo or... Yeah, anybody? I may... I may have fully missed that one. Anybody know anything about that? Do you like the Spyderco Bauer? Um, I, I would. I don't know, Dylan, if you were in here just a little while ago when I was talking about the Brower. Um, I still don't. I still don't like the price tag of it. But I mean, you know, when it comes to materials and knives, like I said, you know, is this knife? You know, this knife, if you're paying for materials alone, is not worth it. And this one here, you know, I mean, pretty much anything over hundred bucks a lot of times you're paying for you know the qc the warranty and stuff like that but there's, there's, a, there's some things i love about the brower and there's some things that just drive my ocd tendencies crazy like this gap in between here right here that drives me nuts and uh knowing that you're pretty much gonna have to buy yourself a 30 dollar deep carry pocket clip so you can just count this knife as being a $200 knife. So Dylan, that's the only thing you got to really like this design to pull the trigger on it. That's my thoughts on it. I got, I got a, a stupid good deal on this from my local shop because I do tons of business with them and they were able to cut me a, a good deal because I wanted to check it out. And that's the only reason I own it. All right. Yeah. And Lynn, you are right. The SMF is a stupid big mofo. But I like big knives, and I cannot lie. It's just one of those things, man. All right, let me swap the camera over here. Zell, I'm going to pause for a second. You go ahead and talk, okay? All right, all right. I got a topic for us when you get back. But, you know, our own designs, this is a Roxy 4. That dude is 4 inches. He's got a full 4-inch blade. Now, we did use 4-millimeter blade stock for it, but... Uh, You know, Woodlands Tactical, the uh, the, the paramilitary two. I've got one. In fact, I've had several. That's a knife I just can't get into. That, and it's the compression lock. The knife itself, I love it. The the uh, ergonomics on it are good. But I've got this plague problem where I'm. It's called uh, what the heck is it called? It basically it's a uh, cross dominant is the medical term, but it's like. I'm basically mostly ambidextrous. And the fact that that thing is not easy to use left-handed uh, just drives me nuts. I wish it didn't because it's such a great user knife. A uh, couple other things we can talk about while Nick's out goofing off or whatever. Okay, so you guys have spoken, and everybody likes this Warthog thing. Well, so has... Uh, DLT trading. We've got another Warthog, and it won't go the same way for some reason. But uh, we've got a Warthog and my 58 millimeter Swiss Army knife. And we even have a Warthog pin from uh, Rick Enderer knives. I think, I believe that's the investigator pin. Uh, Really been enjoying the Warthog stuff, especially the scale on this XM18. And we can go over that real quick. You guys, uh, not too many videos out on these knives. Uh, I've got a big, long video coming at some point, but uh, the XM18 on bearings is everything that any of the other knives on this table should be. Snappy action. This particular sheep's foot was even... Uh, 23 thousandths behind the edge. So all of the, in this particular ver model, all of, or this particular knife, I should say, <coughs> all of my complaints from Hinderer have been nullified with the exception of those two little jumps right there. You know, I wish they would do something about that, but uh, I can live without it or live with it, I suppose. Yeah. Nick won't. He's going to wait till they make him go away, I think. No, I think, um, I think I'm just going to bite the bullet by probably a three inch because, you know, as far as what I can carry comfortably, I'm just going to get it and say, screw it. Just do it. Just grind it off myself. There you go. You need to get over to D and I'm, this is not a commercial for DLT trading guys, but they do have the no choil Spontos and the no choil slicers from time to time. Yes. They and do. 
that means this choil right here doesn't exist. The blade comes all the way back to here. And uh, if you don't use that choil, then especially in the three inch version, getting that no choil is probably a great idea. And anyhow, we were just talking about big knives and, you know, that we can do that whenever you're not around Staza because then, oh. then you don't fuss at us. No, don't get me wrong. I, I absolutely love, I mean, you know, just like whenever you, um, I had the Master Chief, was that, no, the uh, XL Raptor. I absolutely love it. When I can carry them to where they're not, like, dragging my lightweight charts down, I love them. Love having more blade than I can have. But, you know, for me, it just, just doesn't work out, though. That's just not the cards for me right now. And somebody wanted me to show the busker, so it may not you... show it. <laughs> You brought out the busker. Man, I, I love the thing. I even love the wear on that finish. Yeah, it did. It, that's one thing that I was really shocked because, like, you know, it gets carried a lot. So, you know, it started pulling that off. And it looks like it's, like, part of the finish. You see that, like, peaks? Love yep. it. Yeah, and Dylan, you can do – you can get the no-choil uh, hinderer from uh, DLT Trading. And all it takes is a grinder to get rid of the uh, flipper if uh, you don't want the flipper. Not a problem. Yeah, I can take care of that for you. Yeah, send it, send it this way. I got a grinder. And I can, I'm li I'm reading Troy thing. Yeah. I just bought S110 power military off slice dice and can't get it out of my pocket. It was the first real Spider Co. Now I'm hooked. <laughs> to the impression lock is absolutely yep, yep. I mean, uh, power used to be my my ultimate knife and once my after my accident um i had to shift to the para three and i'll tell you what this rex 45 and this para three absolutely love it and i'm waiting on another deep carry clip because i stole this one off of this guy and put it on the brower because i had a different one of them getting a, a coated black one for the uh rex one i think it looked cool but i'll tell you what i wish I could figure out a nice carry solution to carry it in like I have a few slip sheets because this is a game changer without a pocket clip. I mean, super comfortable. Well, yeah, and that's almost small enough just to throw down in a pocket. And light enough, you know. Mm-hmm. So I might I might give that a try while I have the pocket mm -hmm. clip off of it. I'm waiting on another one to come in. Might try to let it dangle in the pocket, but I I, I won a nice uh pocket slip. For, from a uh, tale of knives or whatever. I don't know how somebody entered me in that giveaway somehow. And if it fits in that, I might try it. Put It, it carries that. In, uh, what is that, Zell? Well, that's what I was going to say. I'm going to swap the cameras back over. You were talking about pocket slips and stuff, and I just got this package in. Oh, from, I know what that is. From Scout Leather Company. And, you know, we're doing that giveaway here soon, and uh, we're waiting on some more sponsors but uh, we can divulge a few things and this is one of them these are valet trays you snap them together and they go like this and they hold and uh i ain't got enough room we'll use a small one you snap the corners together and they make a neat little valet tray almost looks like Ooh. a seven seventies model ashtray but they're leather so don't be smoking and dumping your ashes in there i like that uh got pocket protectors i got that one uh, two different colors. Looks like a black with black thread and a tan, dark brown maybe, with white thread. And here's the big ones right here. Check this out. Got two of those. Oh, yeah. From Scout Leather Company, and they hooked us up. They didn't just send those. They don't sell uh, the power drivers like I use, these uh, extended ones. So. Yeah. What Joe sent me was two sets of their standard drivers, which is super cool because these actually have Phillips and flat and uh, some other bits in them for taking care of just about any knife you want to come across. But since you were talking about the leather goods, I thought we might stick these in there because, you know, that's cool. Another thing that just showed up is Clay and the team over at Wicked Edge have sent a Wicked Edge with stones up to a thousand grit and a base. Mm -mm -mm. So I don't think they realize what's about to happen, Zell. They don't. I don't think 
people realize the, the epicness of this giveaway that's about to happen that we've been talking about. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm holding some things back. I've got two custom anodized knives that are going to go in this. I've got these these little pry bars I was goofing around with. Little uh, they're Alabama Damascus. I think it's called redneck skin. Of course, that's probably not politically correct, but that's what they call it. Um, and let me see. Dean, uh, you, you asked to tell us about the light, and I'm guessing, I think I'm the only one that has a light. Do you have yep. one, Zell? Uh, no, not on the table. You're up, Staza. Okay, I got this one at Blade Show this year. This is the this is just the uh, Four Sevens Prion one, but it was the Prometheus Design Works collaboration. Let's see, that's the Four Sevens, I think, and there's the Prometheus logo. And this is just aluminum. This is all I really need. Like the pie clip, I'm big on the tail clicky. Um, I don't like those side buttons. It just throws me off. I've been doing the tail clicky for so long. Um, and I think, I mean, it wasn't cheap for what you're getting, but I think it, to me it's just perfect size for EDC for me. Uh, I think it was like, show special was like 35 bucks, but I think they're like 40 or 50 now. Um, 100 lumens. If I'm not carrying this, I have that um, the keychain light that I also wear around my neck sometimes. That these those two are my favorite. I showed it in my gear vi my gear video. If you want to check that out. Okay, so I have to ask a question about that uh, flashlight. Yeah. What does it do whenever you first turn it on? It goes to whatever setting was the last. Okay, I need to order six of them. I am pretty sure, Zell. Let me make sure, but I'm pretty sure it's the last setting. Because that's the one thing all of these loom heads, uh, they want the light to come on on Firefly mode or whatever it's called, the, the stupid, uh, you might as well not even turn it on mode. And I, I just think that's, for me, it's nuts. Because if I turn a flashlight on, I want to be able to see something right then. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you know yes yeah. i'm the same way uh and, go ahead well i just wanted to know if that's what it did because if that's what it did i need to get you, have you tell me what it is so i can order me one yeah now the only thing and let me do it off screen um the only thing that i wish the firefly mode to me isn't a true firefly it's I mean, it's not terribly, it's like maybe five lumens, but I like that like 0.5 where it doesn't, you have no chance of messing up your night vision. Um, real quick, I see Thomas uh, asked a question. He said, which is better still overall between S30B and 154 CM? It, it really depends on the application you're using it for. They're both good steels. S30V, I would say, is slightly better. Now, CPM 154 is a much better steel than 154 cm because it's a powder metal larger steel. Um, it, it it really depends. What would you say about that, Zell? Okay, well, I I would say that that is that you got to split hairs between those two. S30V is going to hold an edge longer, but it's going to be chippy, uh, and it's not all. It's sometimes it's chippy in a bad way. Sometimes it's chippy in a good way. Sometimes it's chippy and it gives you a micro saw. Sometimes it's chippy and well, it's just bad. The 154 CM doesn't chip very bad, and it shines up better if you're doing polished edges. But the sharp, the edge will fall off a wee bit faster than S30V. But it doesn't chip out, so it's kind of one of those six of one, half a dozen of the other things. You know, if you're cutting soft materials, S30V. If it's a general purpose knife, 154 CM or CPM 154. Does that sound about right, uh, Staza? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I was I was reading something in the comments and uh, it just kind of messed me up. I'm, let's see. Sorry. Yeah, and you're right, Lynn. Uh, S35VN is holds an edge slightly longer than the 154s, and yeah, the addition of the vanadium and the slight jiggering around of the other things made it where it wasn't as nasty to the not just belt grinders but all the tooling. Because S30V, even in a kneeled state, is kind of mean to uh, tooling, whether it's mill tooling, lathe tooling, or abrasives. 
I don't know what Slicey did, Dino, but we've just not been paying any attention and because that's not our realm. Uh, Staza and I are here doing our own thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. I got a Lynch clip. This is Troy. He says, I got a Lynch clip, too. I had a problem getting the screws to work. Uh, the reason I got that mini grip off Eustasa was to have an access lock in the hole. Okay. All yep. Hey, that that is one thing I love about that model. You, you know, if you love the the access lock and you love Spider Co's, you know that's the best of both worlds right there with that the the grip with the uh, drop point sheep's foot blade. I mean, um, and I hope I hope you get a lot of use out of that thing. It's got a lot of life left to it. And only thing it, it Troy it. You, you ought to go ahead, unless you like uh, the nice worn clips, you can get a brand new one from uh, Benchmade. They'll send you one in the mail. Hang on. So I just got uh, a Ravon. Like, how do you like How do you like that, Troy? Yeah, because I don't even know what that is, Troy. You're going to have to enlighten me, man. I, if I'm thinking of the same light, uh, I was looking at a light the other day. And uh, it's a small, I don't know if it's the same light, but it's smaller than the one I have on here. And it's like 550 lumens. And uh, I saw it on Best Damn EDC Gear, whatever's um, video, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah. He he had it. And I thought it was that Ray, whatever, Rayvon, whatever light. He talked about it and it just looked amazing. Uh, it's it's a very small light. Like I said, smaller than mine. I think it comes in aluminum and black. Black aluminum and um, clear. And it's like 500 or 550 lumens. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, there's some questions to answer here. Let's, let's go yeah. back a little bit. So, VV Praxis. Okay, uh, we'll need Nick here in just a moment. But the Praxis is not my favorite. It's a dang good knife, but it's a, the medium heavy use end of the Civivi uh, li small line of knives right now. My favorite is the Backlash because it's hollow ground. It's just thinner behind the edge and a better overall slicer and everyday carry knife. But if you're doing heavier use stuff, the Praxis is super cool. They're all, if I remember right, and guys don't quote me or beat the hell out of me over this, but if I remember right, they were all around four ounces. So they're not terribly heavy. And here's what we need Nick for is the steel on those knives, the 9CR18 MOV. Yes. Um, I can, well, so nobody beats you up. The Naja is 5.2. 5.2, all right. Yeah, just because I, I have it from a little while. I was doing some more testing on the Naja. I've been testing that 9CR18 MOV. Um, so far, my first my first uh, cardboard cutting, you know, none of it's science. It's all bro science. But um, my first test was between it and Spyderco's VG10 on the Endura that Troy now owns, and um, they both dropped off at almost the exact same time. Uh, if you want to see more of that, go check out that video. Um, and then lately, I've been doing other tests with it. Some uh, one thing I have noticed it's very the Naja has got a deep hollow grind as well, and it is super thin behind the edge. I don't have it offhand, I think it's like 16 or 17 thousandths behind the edge. Yeah, the, na is. the nausea is flat ground though. Oh, it, well, regardless of what it is, it, it, it's a slicing machine with that, that tall grind. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's flat ground. My bad. Um, and even whenever it drops off in the uh you know you know super sharp that thin grind on there will keep that working edge going through material like crazy well my question is and i i meant to ask you this i guess i'll do it on air with everybody uh the the vg10 the thing that upsets me especially with spider crows vg10 because i guess they temper it softer is Whenever that edge starts to roll off, it gets super dull, super fast. Mm -hmm. And is this 9CR18 with uh, Wii or Civivi, whatever you want to call them, is, is their heat treat doing that? No, uh, 
my experience, and, and this is just me and one knife, so, you know, your mileage may vary on whoever else has a knife. Um, I've noticed without, like, some of the, the VG10, he knows that um, it'll either get a blunt spot or the roll, you know, that's pretty much your blunt spot. And the softer stuff, I noticed, like, you get that soft, you get that roll, and it's just uh, a spot that doesn't cut anymore. And with the 9CR, the, I, I've noticed that whenever it does its rolling, it's almost acting like a serrated part of the edge right there and keeps a working edge on it. Oh, wow. Now, that is, that's cool. That's really good to know because that's one of the questions I meant to ask you whenever we were on the phone, and I, I always forget. Yeah. All right. Look, Troy's talking about that, that light I was talking about. Mm -hmm. two and a half hours that's amazing at 550 lumens no kidding that's better than some of my old lights yeah what what battery gives you that uh kind of output troy you have to i know you probably that probably depends on what yeah like just like lent was saying all right so real quick here i've got a couple more things to show off that happened at blade show uh west some of you got to see this guy. This is our Roxy 4 prototype. And uh, they even did a, an anodization and then a flame over it, which I thought came out really, really cool. Uh, these, are though, are going to be Blade Show Atlanta 2019. Uh, another super cool thing that came to me at Blade Show. This is a Ferox, guys. Yummy. The Goody Van Poppel Ferox. Now... Just looks fancy like he did some cutouts and some uh, running it, you know, through with the Dremel and fancy finish. But uh, look at this. Oh, look I love it. That. That's kind of like uh, the finish on my, um, what you call it? Uh, uh, I don't know, Nick. Busker. My busker. My busker, right. And then he did flame anno. On the pocket clip, smoothed up the pocket, polished it all up, and then did a flame anno, and even put a custom Goody Van Poppel bead in there with it. And cool. let's see one more thing, and I don't know if we can get this on camera, maybe a little bit, but it is signed by Mr. Oh, Van Poppel down in there. Yep. And that was just... Uh, I was blown away that he sent this over here for all of us to look at. Uh, they sold two of them at Blade Show West, and Goody sent this one for us. And, and and actually, the one that he sent for us is a little more fancy than the ones they sold at Blade Show. Uh, let's see. What was the other thing I wanted to get to? Oh, something we talked about while you were gone. Yeah, goofing off. Uh, I'm starting to get my Warthog collection up, Staza. Oh, I was about to say, I saw that on Instagram. And where did you find the, uh, the little one, that one? They're all from DLT Trading. Okay. That is something That's DLT is doing. And, and guys, everybody watching, I need you to message DLT Trading and let them know that when the XM24 comes out in the Gen 6, that we've got to have a Warthog scale for it. Yes, indeed. Because I'll have to have an XM24. And uh, I'm gonna want, I'm gonna, I'm gonna want the Warthog scale for it because you guys have enjoyed this Warthog scale so much. I, whenever I first put it on, I wasn't too sure about it, but the response from you guys here on YouTube and the guys over on Instagram, it's on there for good. It's the Warthog. Yeah, if you, if Zell, if you pick up any more of those, uh, those guys that you have, that you will, it's on, the, it's lagged on the screen. Uh, yeah, that one in your hand. If you pick up any more of those, let me know. I want to get one because I'm always carrying this uh, this one, the Alox version, and I absolutely love it, but I love that one as well, the Warthog or whatever. Yeah, and with the plastic, the best thing about the 58 millimeter Swiss Armies with the plastic is you get the toothpick and you get the tweezers, and I use those tweezers all the time. Yeah. And another little flashlight, since we're talking a little flashlights, is this is the 1R EOS from Olight. It's a little two-stage flashlight. I forget how many lumen it is. It's not anything crazy, like 100. But the coolest thing about this flashlight is you loosen that up, and it's got a USB charging port right there. 
Yeah, that yeah, that's the one I got on my light. I love, love, love that light. Yeah, and I got them whenever O light had that first, sale. Yeah, well, whenever they first brought them out, and I think I got two <laughs> of them for like fifteen bucks. They're like ten or eleven bucks now, but holy goodness, it, you can't yeah. beat that thing. It's bright. Oh, yeah, we got I, we got we got a we got a, a legend in the house right now. I don't know if you see Eugene's in the house. Eugene, What's how up? are you doing, buddy? Uh, let me get you back over to Staza. He needs to show you what has happened to that busker. Oh, I think he he's might have seen it. Let's see. Check it out, Eugene. Oop. Oh, is that mine? No, uh, that was mine. Check it out. Uh, it'll pop up on the screen. We got a little lag time, but look at that that nice wear. And I've been talking to him back and forth, and this guy's probably going to go back to him because he's going to uh, either we're going to do something with it, probably make another one with some texture, the same pattern, but just with some texture because the dexterity of my hands just doesn't work like it used to since my accident. And I, like I said before, I don't want this knife going flying across my room. It's too damn nice. And I love it too much. This thing's so smooth. Absolutely love this. And I talked to Eugene at blade show. He's they're They're awesome. Love it. Love it. Perfect, perfect. What you think about it, Zell? Man, I can't remember what the blade shape is. I, I and I'm sorry, Eugene, but the Semper or the uh, the other one is the. Uh, well, I'm sorry, Eugene. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my thing is is with Todd Knife and Tool, we have the Roxy coming out, which is a similar size knife. So I have reined in my cash, and I'm uh, sorry, Eugene, but I just can't buy one right now because we've got a similar size knife coming out with Todd Knife and Tool, and uh, I'm going to carry that one. Even though those uh, those buskers, man, if I could get, I think you ca call it Acid Rain. Yeah. Uh, uh, I we had one of the other one of the larger Alamic knives in Acid Rain, which was just super cool. This is how I'm going to start reading over some of the comments because I we've been missing a few. I mean, a good bit of them, but uh, let's go. I'm going to kind of catch I'm gonna you back hit, up. Go ahead. Hit the wasabi here real quick because uh, that was asked quite a ways yeah, back. The wasabi is cool if you like worn cliffs. It's a big, plain, no color. I mean, it's just gray. But if you like worn cliffs, it's the knife for you. The action is great. Works awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, so what else we got? Um, yeah, Eugene was just saying that that's – yeah, mine is a Semper, and, yeah, that size is, is hot. And lucky for me, that size that size is hot. That's pretty much 80% of my collection is sub three-inch knives because since my accident, that's all I can really carry comfortably. Yes, Acid Rain is awesome. Tell you what, Eugene – out of all the uh, boosts that I that I hit at Blade Show, and I hit every one of them three times, the finishes that you provide is unbelievable. And I'm not just blowing smoke up his ass right now. Anybody who was at Blade Show can back me up. He does some badass finishes on the knives. Oh Come yeah, on. oh yeah. Like he was saying that that acid rain. T Tony Meter talked us out of it because. It was one of the first in whichever model that was to come in that acid rain finish. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I'm not sure what Tony's deal is, but he seems to have the right money at the right time to get knives from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we ended up letting Tony have it. If you watch his Instagram, you'll see that knife fairly often. And I always give him a hard time about it, but yeah, that's one of the coolest finishes ever. Uh, Oaken. Okay. I will show the booze off in one second. I'm at the pause, though, and uh, check on my girls real quick. So give me a second, Zell. All right, man. Go right ahead. And uh, Dylan, you're right. That is that is the whole idea of this. Let me get the camera swapped over. The whole idea of this knife at night is Nick and I have the rare opportunity to be able to get on here late at night, talk knives, and, you know, with whoever can hang out with us. And Damon, uh, our knives, let's see, this one, Blade Show Atlanta 2018, the smaller version of this one, very soon, by sometime in December. 
the this one here is going into production very very soon so we're looking at probably december that's the malware uh probably december on this one as well uh we have another one in the works that i'm not going to tell everybody about just yet that will also be blade show atlanta and we have at least one more, maybe two more in the works that I don't have definite time frames on yet. Uh, the ones you see at the top of the screen, the Val and the uh, Master Chief, uh, we're working on these as far as the deal goes, and we don't know if it's actually going to go through or not. These are production prototypes. And uh, we'll see how that works out. And if it works out great, then these won't be too far off either. And uh, and that's kind of our schedule. We've got some big surprises coming from Todd Knife and Tool in the next, oh, probably in the next 24 months that uh, I hope you guys all enjoy. And uh, one of them is just going to be, oh, it's going to be a bomb. It's going to be something amazing. <coughs> But uh, that's kind of our schedule. And uh, I don't have the small Roxy with me. I need to bring one of those prototypes up here. But uh, for everybody, okay. you're going to have the 4-inch Roxy, and then you're going to have the Roxy that will fit within the handle length of the 4-inch Roxy. Got about a 2 and 5-inch inch blade. So, you know, I'll just beg everybody, please buy both so that you've got a pair. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that uh, the Roxy that I handled at Blade Show, I, it's it's it. Like I said, if it comes out during Christmas time, Santa Claus is gonna be good to me because it's it's on that list. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's awesome, man. I, I I'm glad to hear it. This this whole community has been so awesome to Seth and I. Uh, not not just the consumer side, but the the maker side too. Everybody from some of the biggest name makers that you know, icons of the industry, helping us out, helping us figure things out to the customer support, uh, everybody out there looking forward to the knives, talking to us about them. It has been just, it's unreal. Uh, and we're having so much fun and we hope you can, we can bring you guys some awesome stuff. Yeah. I mean, and just, I, I mean, just to be honest, the, the community, our community is awesome. Uh, I've been, you know, I've been part part of the gun community before, and uh, several other ones, and and nothing quite comes across like the knife community. Just people are so nice. Somebody gets knocked down, there's somebody right there to pick you up. I mean, before my act, when my accident happened, it was unbelievable how many people followed my wife's Instagram, I mean, my wife's Facebook to know how I was doing. And they didn't know me from Adam and they still talk, they still keep up with me today. And that's the only reason they, they knew me back in that time, three years ago. It was just amazing. Well, you know, we'd all do anything for you, Stazza. Yeah, but you know what I mean? I mean, I, I know you've been, you've been on other forums before and oh, yeah. most of those other forums are just there to bash people because they don't know something about something. And we got some of those here, but I mean, most of the time, those people get weeded out pretty quick. Yeah, they do. And how you doing, Hiram? You're in Argentina. That Ooh. is awesome. I would like to be there for a little while. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's starting to get cold and rainy here. I'm, I don't like that. Well, I'll come hang out at your house, Enzo, because uh, we, don't, we don't really find the cold stuff down here. Uh, they called cold uh, 65 today. That was the coldest it's been since last winter. Okay, well, here, if I got me, I've got my screen up. It's 52 outside right now. 52. Yeah, I think it's, it's like I said, they're calling it cold right now. And I think right now it's, uh, let me see what my temperature gauge says. Uh... 69 yeah kiss my butt no well like i said i i would trade with you in a heartbeat i mean and i, I have the re for personal reasons for that but you know my oh my yeah is the best especially since some are competitors but it's like we all help yeah i mean like i said you do have some bad apples out there and like i said they get weeded out quick but 
we just have so many genuine, nice people. And if you really get to know some people on here, you will be, Ooh, I just know, I'm sorry. <laughs> you just showed a night that I want so bad. Um, if you get to know some of these people, they're just great people. I've, I've, that's one thing that I love about have starting this channel. Uh, I've met so many more awesome people and I hope to meet more of y'all along the way. That's, that was my main objective is to either share some knowledge that I've picked up along the last 25 years of knife collecting or, uh, or just shoot the shit with other knife people. And that's awesome. Nine degrees Celsius. Who you got us? What what is that in Fahrenheit? Higher? Oh, oh oh no, that that's pretty reasonable. Nine is uh, sixty four degrees. Yeah. No wait. No, what no, is no. it higher? I was reading. I don't know. I I can find out for you. But uh, we have Chief, the protos of the knives. Okay, so so far this has been our policy on the protos because we get this question a lot. <sighs> We do not sell the prototypes currently because, one, whenever it's a handmade prototype, like, let me swap cameras here, like this one, uh, we don't want those out in the wild basically because we can't support them. We don't have the infrastructure for the customs to actually support them. And we don't want you left out there hanging on a limb if something goes wrong. And that's kind of how some of the, if the prototypes don't go to full production, that's kind of how they'll be because I don't want to leave you as a customer out there uh, just hanging with nothing. You know, and, and, you know, maybe I'm being overprotective of the customer there, but I, I don't want you know, problems. Nine degrees Celsius is about 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, I see that. Well, hey, that's still cold. That's a lot colder than it is at our places right now. Bueno Aries, it's 2 a.m. o'clock. Yeah, well, it's it's right at midnight here for me and uh, Staza. I like comparison to that. Wait. I would say I like the comparisons that make Zelrick. <laughs> <laughs> My voice like cowboys from a movie. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, was hey, I, I was wondering I, what you're saying. I am kind of from the South. And uh, Nick, I put it on my camera because you were talking about this guy, weren't you? What? was? Uh, yeah. Uh, I wanted, I'm going to have to pick up the, the, the run they got out right now with the, uh, the wood and the G10 liner lock version. I think I'm gonna have to pick one of those up and then try to, next time they come out with the frame lock because I handled the prototype at Blade and I handled that that one and it was remarkable how close they were to his custom. Well, yeah, here's what I was gonna say about it, and whenever you guys want to wait for whenever you get to the review, this is basically the stuff I'm gonna say about it. They have done a great job. The compound grind doesn't give you any problems cutting anything. It is a very flat worn cliff, but. I've got a couple of the Bokers, and the Bokers are okay. Uh, of the Black Brad Sinker designs, they're okay. Uh, I'll be honest, they're garbage. <laughs> well, it depends on which one you get. Yeah, got, what those the ones you have are, are pretty good. Yeah, I've got the S35VN versions, uh, so they're not bad. But we and Mass Drop have just done a phenomenal job of making the action on this little knife. Uh, you got a stainless steel clip, but who cares? And the only things I can see that they did differently is most of Brad's customs. He goes through and he cuts all the holes, or drills all the holes, and then he goes back and uh, chamfers the around the edge of the holes and either anodizes them or polishes that area. And they skipped on that because that's expensive. That's a lot of work. So that was the only thing that kind of put me off whenever I first saw it was they didn't have the uh, chamfer and the anodizer, the chamfer and the polish in them. But uh, action-wise and everything else, uh, way better than most of the bokers unless you get one of the expensive ones. And just, yeah, if they put them up on mass drop again and you're interested in Brad's designs, uh, this is the best way you're going to get a production zinker. Yeah. Uh, real quick, uh, to answer Damon, is it Damon? Damon's question, uh, the 
my CRK still holds a special place in my collection unless uh, the the right trade comes up and it would have to be the right trade. Um, I, I'm, I'm really wanting a 21 basically like the same, same as my uh, Inkosi, but I mean, I definitely wouldn't do an even swap or something like that, but uh, I've been thinking about it just because it doesn't get to get carried as often as I, as I would like because of the weight for me. Um, so it's always pretty much almost if it hasn't been gifted to me by my wife or a friend or it doesn't hold sentimental value, pretty much anything's possible to get rid of in my collection. Let's see. All right. We- so, so they were asking about the compound grind here on this little guy. Uh, I really <laughs> think that they did this one just for looks and they did a heck of a job with it. Because it really doesn't get but just a smidge thicker back here. And if you look at, I don't know how well we can see on the video, but if you look at the secondary bevel, it is straight across, ran through the sharpening machine once or twice. So it's not making any difference down there at the apex. So super nice. Uh, And I've cut a lot with it because I always do that with a compound grind thinking, what the heck is wrong with that? But no problems. Is Very... it kind of is it kind of like that we that I tested out? Remember um, the uh, four inch? Yeah, the Yusha. Yeah, it's it, in fact it's ground somewhat similar. Similarly, it's got the flat grind back here, and then it's actually got a taller flat grind right through here. And it's and it's just like that Yusha. It just it doesn't seem to cause any problems. And more and it of looks aesthetic. cool. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't I, I don't mind them. They're definitely not I don't they don't really do it for me aesthetically, but on that knife after handling it, being that it's such a slim profile already, the footprint is so like Brad had had his in his shirt pocket, his t-shirt pocket, and I, he was like he's like, "Yeah," and he pulled it out. I was like, "Wait, was that knife up there cuz like it didn't hang or act funny?" I was like, "Yeah, that's perfect for me." with my craziness, with my shorts. So I'll definitely be picking one of those guys up. Yeah, and so let's see. What somebody asked, uh, who makes the that knife, the zinker that I was just messing with? That's a mass drop made knife, and mass drop con- contracts we to make those knives. So it's one of those deals where you got to do everything through mass drop, but the, the actual OEM is a uh, we knife company. So... And yeah, you know, they've done a great job with it. Yeah, who can? Uh, I feel the same way. Warren Cliffs are great cutters. I think they're very great for detailed. Like anytime I have any kind of project with my daughter, where it's going to be like I need to have an Exacto knife, but I want to use one of my knives that are in my pocket, it's going to be a Warren Cliff more than likely. Let's see. I will be getting one soon. What is that, Thomas? The uh, dog tooth. <clears throat> um, yeah, is that what that thing's called? It's a dog tooth. Yeah, that's what it. Uh, I just remember because whenever I when I did my video uh, with Brad at Blade Show, um, he had like I said, he had the prototype in his front pocket, and he had his custom, and he was just, he was amazed of how well we did with replicating his proto, and he put him down on the table. And they didn't have his maker. Neither one of the knives had his maker mark on it because they're both prototypes. Mm-hmm. And he said, he's like, pick which one's my custom. And he said, you won't hurt my feelings if you don't pick the right one. And I was like, I was looking them over and I was like, oh, to him. I said, the only reason I know that this is your handmade custom is because of the stop pins. Ah, I okay. could, you know, the wear mark on the stop pin. I was like, that's the only I said, and I'm taking a guess there. And he was like, yeah, you got it. <laughs> what does it say? He probably said, Stasa, do you think I should get that six ZT609 as my first zero tolerance? It seems small. I'm considering the blue sprint run, or would I be better off with the ZT0562CF? Um, depends on what size hands you have, Troy. Uh, the 609 for me is 
perfect because I owned the the Sinkovich 450, and that was going to be the perfect knife for me because it was, you know, the size range that I was looking for because I have a medium-sized hand. And it has a crazy hot spot for my hands by the pinky. So the 609 came up, and uh, it's very slim in all dimensions. And it's actually ground decently thin, too. A lot of ZTs are ground uh, 30 thousandths and over. I think this one's ground at 25 thousandths. And that's, it's, it's a good slicer. Um, it just depends on what you're looking for. That um, other one you were talking about, that's the Hinderer design, right, Zell? The 562? Yeah, the, yeah, that's the Hinderer slicer. Yeah, now that's an awesome one, too. I have... I haven't owned one, but my buddy Copper Dice had one, and it's but you can't really go wrong. It just depends on, you know, if you, if you have medium sized hands or if you have large hands. If you have large hands, go with the 0562, and if you have medium small hands, um, the 0609. And <laughs> but also you got to remember you you got to buy that tool if you plan on ever taking apart this uh, knife, unless you want to make you one like I did in the beginning. But just some stuff to think about. Or you could just get a zero four zero four fifty two and not worry about any of it. Yeah, that's oh well, yeah, that too. But I'm thinking he he's talking about like that blade shape, you know. Yeah, I'm just I've got uh, what two three of the zero four fifty twos. I think you're you're biased on that. That's your favorite one, huh? Uh, for the ZTs, absolutely. That's uh, that's my favorite. Uh, um let's see matthew said i just picked up the Thai s9 ev milli i saw that is that the knife works exclusive one um I yeah, what's like that? that what's that milli you've got sitting over there on the left there uh, that's another knife works exclusive this is the 204p my only milli i have just because it's it's still light and anytime i have like uh um uh, uh a big cardboard uh stack to to break down for knife testing this is the knife that gets pulled out and it's it's got some miles on it and i've only touched it up on the sharp maker and dropped okay hang on just put it on go ahead hang on just a second dylan yeah no kidding get to bed man you need to get those protos and whenever you get a hold of those things uh You've got my email. Send me some pictures of the actual protos and tell the uh, the U.S. rep guy there that whenever those protos come in or whenever the actual production models come in, I want one of those. All right, man? What, what is he? What, what are y'all talking about? Oh, he has a design coming out with Artisan Cutlery, uh-huh. and uh, and it's pretty freaking cool. I'm going to have to check that out. It, it, did they, anybody have Blade Show coverage of it? You know, it's, it wasn't that Blade Show. Mallory Designs over on Instagram. Uh, and, of course, Artisan Cutlery's Instagram. And you I can think see I'm it. following Dylan already, Mallory Designs. I think I'm already following him. So I'll, I'll go check it out, buddy. Always like finding new stuff. I have that same 204 Military. It is a great one. Yeah. Um, Oaken, when, whenever I decided, you know, I always wanted to get a military. Um I wanted one in good steel, and I wasn't going to pay the ridiculous price for the Bento Box Shop M390, and that one, you know, was coming in and out, and that 204 uh, Knife Works exclusive one, you can still go buy it right now. They're always in stock, so I wanted one ready, readily available. Yeah, and Dylan, I don't know if we're sweet, man. My, my wife tells me I am taste a little sour, but... That's okay. And Hiram, if you look at the bottom of any of my videos, my email address is right there. Bottom of every video in the description section. And I can't yeah. always say that. <laughs> yeah, well, how's I've got it. The... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Damien said, how's the, the Pina doing? Uh, Pina? Uh, it's good, but it's kind of sitting on that same term as the uh, Sabenza, I mean, the Inkosi, um, the weight and size, it doesn't get carried as often. I uh, really, really wish I could get a hold of one at like 
somebody would trade me one of the new ones that just came out with the two tone blade and the uh, micarta uh, scales in the back. Oh man! Yeah, do they have that pina in anything that isn't a recurve? Not well. He he's got uh, in, not this this model, but he has this diesel model. Um, the one you know I'm talking about. The it's a non recurve. Yeah, I'll have to look it up. He just I don't know if those actually dropped, but I saw them on his page and I, I want to say I saw them for sale somewhere, but they look just like his custom. Riot's doing them as well and they're not a recurve. Um and they're he said I think he said they're the exact same size as the uh Lannies. Um just with that diesel blade shape. All right, man. Yeah, and hire him just send send anything you got, man. I'll get a look at it. Yeah, the X series are all the same blade. I can do another for you. Oh. <laughs> What's up, X ninety five? No kidding. Um, yeah. let's see. Do we miss I mean I know sorry if we missed some of y'all questions, but we got a bunch of stuff. Okay, Oaken. What best? do y'all think about the best steak parrot? All right, Zoe, so you got one right. I had it right here on the freaking there it is because I took them pictures for you what last night but yeah. uh, there this is the parrot right yep okay first off whenever I got it out and I looked at it I thought man that's a goofy looking knife and, and that's that's honestly what I first thought and then I thought well you know Staza wouldn't have sent one up here for me to look at if there wasn't something to it so I stuck it in my pocket. And I went out and I used it for a day or two and it all kind of makes sense once you put it in your hand. And then they done a great job <coughs> swedging this thing, flat grind, pretty thin behind the edge. And then I had it laying on the desk and uh, Susie picked it up. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you're going to get it back, Staza. <laughs> you know how that works, right? Yeah, that's fine. Because whenever she picked it up, opened it up, first she could flip it open, which she has some problems with flipping some of them open. And then she put it in her hand. She was like, oh, yep, that's the one. I like that. And I was like, well, okay. But yeah. uh, it, it's a cool one for a little one. It, it does make it kind of hard. I mean, I've got uh, some of the best techs laying here. This is the coolest one. Yeah, that's my favorite. That and the engine. Yeah, this one, though, has the ergonomics <laughs> that just make you, you want to use it. Oh, definitely. It's still That's still, hands down, my favorite best tech. I mean, as far as, you know, the smaller ones. And, you know, I do have the engine up here, too, because I've got that one with the, what, the Spectrum TI on the back of it. Yeah, something crazy. Yeah, and the engine's really good, too. I like the, what I call a bubble, cam bubble gum package uh, size of it. It's a little bigger in the pocket than some of the other ones. But uh, then whenever you put your hand around it, there's enough to get a hold of. It kind of fills your hand up. Yeah. And, and that's, that's kind of nice. So, and they did the spectrum TI stuff on the back, which is just kind of cool. But the parrot, let me get these Medfords out of the way. They don't belong here with these little knives because they're definitely not little. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know, there's kind of the three of them side by side and you know if i were picking it i would pick the goblin every time but this one is smaller in the pocket and it's it's just smaller in every dimension as far and probably a little lighter too i haven't weighed them so i would go ahead i would just say if you're looking for a pocket floater the parrot's probably the one to get yeah the only thing Wait, so Stasa, did you get the S35? No, Dean, I, I didn't, and I was I was telling Zell about it. Only reason I didn't get that uh, pillar is because I've owned six pillars. I I got the last upgraded version in the 12C before the F35 dropped. The only, only way I would have bought a seventh pillar <laughs> is if it would have been a tie frame lock because – the the twelve C to me for that size blade is almost perfect because it's so damn easy to to strop and and keep maintained in the field if I want in my car 
and uh, it takes such a stupid sharp edge, and it's super easy to polish. And don't get me wrong, you know, I I rather S thirty five, but you know, it would have had to been a tie frame lock along with that to drop the weight in order for me to buy a seventh one. That's just my my thoughts on it. Now, whoever got it, that's gonna be a great knife for you. I'll tell you that. Oh yeah, if you didn't have the twelve C twenty seven in one or fourteen C twenty whatever whichever sandwich 12. deal it was, yeah, jump on that S thirty five VN. But I'm kind of with Nick. Uh, a lot of people pick on the, the two Sandvik steels that are popular, the 12C and the 14C. And they're easy to strop. They're easy to maintain. And because they stick them in there, the knives cost a lot less than some of the other knives out there. So I kind of like the stuff. And they, whenever the edge starts to fall off, they don't do what VG10 or what Spyderco's VG10 does they fall off to an edge that you can still cut with. So a working edge is what people like to call it. So I like the 12 C 27 and the uh, 14 C 28. Uh, that's just, you know, been my opinion for a long time. I carried U S made Kershaw's and the 14 C 28 in for a long time because they treated yep. me well. Yep. And, uh, you know, they're uh like i said that you you can get them insanely sharp without like you know for somebody who doesn't you know own you know some high dollar sharpening system and you know you want to be able to maintain your knives very easily you know that steel is perfect for that you know you don't have to just a ceramic rod and you don't even need i mean if you keep it you know, stropped up pretty much every day, unless you, you know, you roll that edge pretty bad, you should be able to keep it nice and sharp, at least with a working edge. And yeah, Hiram, we're talking about the Kershaw, or no, that's a CRKT, uh, dang, pillar, P-I-L-A-R, Pilar. Yeah, uh, so that's, uh, whose book, Hemingway, was it? I believe so, I believe it was Hemingway. About the boat or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, it's a great little knife. I mean, oh, my God, is it a great little knife. Yeah, I got mine right here. I can show. Okay, hang on. Let me get, you back, get the camera back to you. There you go. Look, and I also, while I got it out, I want to show this. Okay, mine, I I've, I've did a polished stone wash to it and also got a nice, nice shiny edge on it. But these scales right here, there's a new, they're, I mean, fairly new to me at least, company in IG called Carbidize. And of course, the name says that they do, uh, well, they do all kinds of different stuff, but uh, they made these scales. And these are some OD uh, green canvas micarta, and they did a phenomenal job on it. But here, the, the Pilar is kind of like the goblin for me. Whereas I think I got a goblin around here. Um, yeah, right here. Uh, they have that same, that same choil. Let me grab it. That same like choil area. These two feel really similar to me in hand. They have that human hand choil right there. <laughs> Very comfortable. And I mean, that's where you're going to hold the knife. I know some people hate to have to use a choil, but that's just the way, you know, to have that smaller full size feeling in a smaller package. Uh, and Vox is one of my favorite designers. So there's not much that he's designed that I was like, oh, that's ugly. Oh, no, he always designs good-looking ones. Now, I do have this thing, his uh, three-and-a-half-inch blades. Yeah. So many of them look just like the last one he designed. Well, he he uh, he, he has that, that issue with some of them, but it's just, I, I don't know. What's up, Slide Tech? You were, you were talking, well, <laughs> never mind. No, no kidding, man. You're, you're, you're like, uh, what are we here? You're 83 minutes late, Slide Tech. That, that, I, I, thought, I thought we were better friends than that. No kidding. <laughs> and Dude, thomas anyone... go ahead uh thomas my car scales for the rat one the best way to find cool scales for your rat one is to search uh ebay and search <sighs> um was it etsy i think it's called yeah. yeah and people are making all kinds of scales for that rat one 
Well, let me chime in real quick. If you want, and I don't know, I know he makes them for the two, and I'm pretty sure he makes them for the, the one. There's a kid that I bumped into. Um, he's he's either about to finish high school or start in college, and he does them on his spare time, and he does a really good job, uh, especially for how young he is. Check him out is Rivendell Knives, and he is very, very affordable. Like, as of right now, before he gets, you know, starts blowing up and getting a meal and all that, his prices are – I don't want to quote a price because they might have changed by now, but his work was really good for, like I said, just getting started, and the prices were uh, – it was a no-brainer. Absolutely. I, I haven't seen any of his work yet, but uh, you'll have to clue me in, man. Yeah, just go – if uh, somebody jumps on Instagram, I think it's R-E-V-E-N-D-E-L-L, Knives, Rivendell. And he also has a YouTube channel, but he doesn't post on his YouTube that much. He, he showed how he's doing some of them in the beginning, and he's kind of like me. He just works out of his garage when he has time. And has a makeshift shop, so can't you know? I love supporting people like that. I need a Roxy Four, and I'm in love with the Todd Knife and Tool designs, fresh and different. Yes, sir, the or. Yeah, Thanks, we can. Guys. We can bring some more of those up here. I have the rat. I have a rat too that I made my quarter scales for somewhere around here. And it it definitely makes that knife look way better. Doc P, yeah. Um, does Doc P still do them? I know he does the coatings and stuff like that. He does amazing work, Doc P. Woodland Tacticals was saying. I've been following Doc P since the beginning, and I, he ever since he started getting into the um, coatings, man, he makes some cool, cool stuff. He has a um, laser engraver. Oh, man, I'd love to have one of those. Yeah, you should see what he – I don't know if you follow Doc P on YouTube, but you ought to if not. He – he he's always had a good knack for uh he's he's a retired military vet and uh he's always been good in the designing uh department i got some knives i love them in my country it's very difficult to buy edc or whatever guys <sighs> oh, that sucks bud yeah it what does. is the color of what wait what is the colors on the knife in the middle zell is that a pretty, marble well he's either talking about this one uh which that is a dark bronze with a map torch with a needle point on it flame over the top of it uh the other one in the middle this is a prototype from uh, best tech of the malware and it's just kind of a bronze gold color, and I don't know what's up, what it's going to end up being. I know there will be a black on black version of that one that's badass. <laughs> and then this one is marble carbon fiber. And that kind of thing that kind of covers the weird stuff that was. Uh... Hey, that was the 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 flame one. That's the mm -hmm. first time I'm seeing that one. Well, I saw it a uh, hint of it with your Blade Show video, but I love it. And the Marble Carbon Fiber, you know, I've been loving that one. Yeah, I just wish that stuff was better structurally. Uh, we, it's not you as can good. get we this stuff that we used here isn't. You no. can get structural marble carbon fiber, but uh, we were doing a pro. This is just a prototype, or I say just a prototype, but it was one for me. So, you know, it's one of those things. If the carbon fiber has problems, I can take care of it. Yeah. But, uh, uh, the structural marble carbon fiber is pretty expensive. Oh, yes, it is. And, that's, um, and, and that whole scale is the entire thing is carbon fiber. So I'll tell you what, speaking of carbon fiber, um, I think it's fat carbon fiber fat carbon or something like that on instagram they do some cool ass different shit with carbon fiber yeah i like the zebra wave carbon fiber that is some cool stuff it's it's standard six or 12k weave i don't remember which one but instead of being flat cut it's end cut so it's mm -hmm. got these lines this just wavy lines down it and it's just i don't know cool looking 
Yeah. And and I'm saying that, and I've got another marble carbon fiber knife here, Leong Ma Eraser. I like that that shred too, the shred marble. Oh, it looks like a marble carbon. I think it's just another name for marble carbon fiber, and some of these people saying the shred carbon fiber, where they yeah. shred up pieces of carbon. Yeah, it's the same stuff. It's just a different name for it. <sighs> hey, but- Thomas, I'm sorry. It says you guys like black wash blade finishes. It just depends on the design. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan. I think I, I only have a few in black wash. Uh, I got this little guy. Um, what is this? The Panchinko uh, bean black fox version. Uh, I don't mind them if I really like the, the, the design and it works well, but it's not usually my uh, first choice. But I do like the when it when you start to put some some love marks on it and some wear. I like that look to it. But I I still rather my stone wash and satin finishes. Yeah, and I'm a little different. If you've got a good PVD uh, or DLC, whatever you want to call it, and it is truly black and stays black, I can just love that. And if you've got a PVD that you can tumble. I love that too. Uh, uh, we does some tumble, but there's there's is not all that great. But there's some out there. In fact, uh, guys over at Medford they used to do a just a beautiful tumbled PVD, but uh, they've changed their their PVD coating now, and they, it won't tumble. It takes <laughs> like I was talking to Greg. The new stuff takes like I, I think he was saying eighteen hours in the tumbler. <laughs> Gosh. Well, I mean, I would, I would, it makes sense because the tumbler is way different than the, the virus. It's just a slower process altogether. Yeah. He said the old stuff took, you know, like two or three hours and this stuff has taken a day and a half. Yeah. I believe it. You see that knife I snuck in there on you, Zell? I see that. You keep doing that to me. You understand. There's another guy that that comments on the videos, and he's got that same knife. And, oh, wait a minute. He's got the even cooler one. He's got the one that's got all the brass. Uh, yeah, that one's cool. Uh, it's In fact, it's apocalyptic just like yours, but all the fasteners are brass, and the, I think the back spacer's brass. Yeah. I was just changing out the scenery. Yeah, and if you guys don't know, well, I, I have a sigil, but that, the one that Staz has got up on the screen right now, that's the one I was looking for and I couldn't find. So I've got the carbon fiber version. Yeah, I'm just uh, rearranging the scenery. It's all peeps. Uh, yeah. Let's look at our comments. Let's see. Um, We're at an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah I mean, you tell you tell me, Zell, if you get tired. I, I don't, I'm, I'm pretty much doing nothing, but I don't want to bore any y'all and uh Zell, if you get tired just let me know sasa can you show the crk up close zell am i on screen uh right yeah you're on man yeah let's see i just put it off okay let's see this one i picked up was it last year i think Zell. yeah last year yeah, yeah last year at blade show this was my big my big purchase and it's been great. This was one of the knives that I've been testing with that. Oop, just nailing my, what you call it with it? My, my arm. Um, I've been testing this with that uh, knife pivot lube mainly to see uh, this one. I didn't tear it down. I just put it straight onto the washers and it was a little mixture with the Chris Reeve grease. I just want to see if I damaged my edges now because I just smacked it up against the metal arm. Oh, you see it? I thought you was trying to commit suicide on camera. Nah, I'll go out with with better style than that. If I, if I'm, I would never do something stupid like that. <laughs> I, I've already ran out of my nine lives, so I got to be careful. Uh, yeah, you use several of them up there in one day, man. Yep. <laughs> and that's one thing about this and Kosi. It's probably it's not going to show up on camera like it is, but this thing. I handpicked it at a blade. I think they, they were ready to wring my neck at blade. I literally probably went through 20 different uh, 21s and Nkosis. And uh, I wasn't going to leave there until I found the smoothest one because I before, previous I had owned four 21s and a small Nkosi. And 
none of them were as you know smooth as my friends were so you know i'm spending that kind of money on a knife it's going to be smooth damn it <laughs> yeah and you're feeling left out just be yeah. honest well i mean if yeah i wish i could feel this like you know the the twenty ones in my experience, unless you get like you know one of the uh, one of the special inlaid ones or something, or you get a good one, it takes a little while to break them in and get them that silky smoothness. And yeah. uh, that if you want if you want to be able to jump right into their smoothness, the the cool thing about the Ecosi is just riding on that detent that ceramic detent ball instead. Right, and it doesn't have the pivot bushing, which kind of sucks in a way. But I mean, this thing's super smooth. Heck yeah, I and Woodland, <laughs> there you go. And Woodland's tactical. I really appreciate that. And that means me and Staza must be doing something at least a little bit right. And Damon and Kosi or Sabenza. I think I get. I think you're asking in Kosi or Crop Point. Uh, in Kosi every that. time, or either that or in Kosi or uh, Twenty One. He might be asking. Oh, and okay. In that case, like I said, um, it's they're both completely different actions. The twenty one has a, a um, pivot collar like a paramilitary two does, and that one, no matter how how tight you put that pivot, it's it, it should if everything's properly done, it should never over tighten itself, and that's a cool aspect on that knife. And then the um, the Inkosi is a more robust, beefier Sabenza, I guess you could say, in, in some dimensions. And it kind of starts out smooth like a, a worn Sabenza does. I don't know if that makes any sense, but you got to get them in hand. It's harder to say, to, you know, to see what feeling you like better. Like slide yeah, 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 Dean, you're right. I was thinking in Singo, because, uh, yeah, in Singo, blade shape every time. Yeah, got, I love it. It's got plenty enough point on it, and way easier to sharpen, and just looks cool. Yeah, that, like, I, I my my previous uh, Sabenzas and my previous small and Kosi were all the drop points, and don't get me wrong, that's a sexy-ass blade, but... Something about that Insingo, especially with that swedge up top, it's just badass. Heck yeah, and good night, Pete. Have a good have a good sleep, man. Yep. We'll catch up with you tomorrow because sometime tomorrow we'll probably be doing something similar on Instagram. Yeah, buddy. How was that? Um, there's something else I was. Oh, I want to. I don't know if you saw this one, Zell. I got a couple of, and I don't own any customs, like like real customs, but I got a couple that are spending the night at my house because I was, um, you know, they were all up for sale. But that's not what this is about. I just want to show it. But I, at this knife right here, I don't know. Can you see that, Zell? Yeah, man. This is that Doyle um, crosshair, I think, a coarse hair. Slide mm -hmm. tech, probably tell. If he made this, and I even asked him. If he made this in a, a sub three inch, mm -hmm. oh man, I would be so all over it. And he said that he said he's had a lot of requests, but this one just sells so well for him that it just doesn't make sense to change up his tooling. But he would definitely let me know if he ever made one. You got that orange peel. I just love oh, that yeah. clip. Yeah, I like that. I I mean. I yeah, I have to look at it for my own, for myself. I would want a little less curve there at the end of the blade. That that's getting a little bit yeah, tight. Yeah, it is. But uh, but man, that clip looks good. Yeah, I it, like, it's very comfy. And I like that blade looking bigger than the handle. Always love that. Yeah, let's see what the uh, ratio is there. Can you see that? Oh man, that's tight. I mean, it it it's a, it looks a lot tighter than it actually is because that backspacer comes up, so it doesn't yeah, okay. so you don't get caught. But uh, it's it's a nice knife. Like I said, it, it's just not for me because of the size. But uh, and I'll tell you what, I might I'll probably be posting this on my Instagram 
tomorrow if anybody's interested because I think I think he's going to come down considerably. So if somebody's interested, they might want to jump on it tomorrow. All right, good night, Hiram. And Woodlands Tactical, you know, whenever I first started this YouTube thing and people would say, oh, well, I'm going to go buy that knife, that kind of bothered me. But anymore, you know, we're out here sharing our experience, experiences, sharing what we've been able to see, what we've been able to touch. And yeah, it makes people want to buy knives, but we're going to continue sharing. It's just the way it is. <laughs> no, well, oh, he said we're making him want to buy knives. Oh, well, that's what everybody, every other YouTuber does. <laughs> I, I, you know, that's, that's just the part of, you know, that's part of knife collecting. Um, you know, if I if if I'm broke, I, I'll tell y'all the first thing I do is stay off of YouTube <laughs> or Instagram. <laughs> yeah, I hate to say it because I want you guys to watch the videos, but yeah, you kind of gotta. Cause, yeah, I mean, or you gotta have good willpower, and I just don't. So, <laughs> and don't pay attention to the email notifications on your phone. Yeah, because <laughs> because that's what got me over the past few days. I got the email notification from what's the guy with the deep voice at GP Knives. Tyler here with GP knives <laughs> about that, uh, SMF. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yep. Hiram's got it right. Don't buy drugs, kids. Buy knives. Heck yeah. Much more useful. And they last longer. Um, what else I was, I was about to say, um, all right. You mentioned something earlier. If we're going to continue talking, I, 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 that I have been wanting to talk about, and it's a bit of, it's a thing you can't talk about by yourself on your own video. <laughs> but uh, you you were talking about that uh, Brower, I believe it was, and you were talking about quality and QC and stuff versus yep. um, price. Yeah. And that's something I see a lot in the comments. Somebody will say that knife isn't worth X. Or for that amount of money, that knife should have this blade steel or this type of this or this type of that. And, you know, I, I tell me what you think, Nick, but it feels to me like a lot of people, maybe they don't understand or maybe they don't have the funds available for it. So they don't want to understand lots of different things. But uh, there's a lot more than the bill of materials that goes into making one of these things. Yeah, I'll tell you, you know, um, for me, what truly got me to be like, okay, man, I understand, especially even though I don't own any more customs I, I not, and I haven't owned that many, but whenever, and some of them are ridiculous, but that's, you know, we're not talking about that. I'm talking about somebody who, you know, you know, they put a lot into it. And after just doing small modifications, making scales myself, doing mods to different knives, knowing how long some of this stuff takes and working in a machine shop for a year and a half, knowing how long, you know, it takes to swap out this and do that and break, break end mills and do this and that. All that stuff always plays in my head of how much something costs. And it's always going to be, like I said in an earlier comment, I would say, I mean, you, you tell me, Zell, at around $100, that's about the max when it comes to materials, would you say? Raw materials. I'm just saying raw materials. Yeah, unless you're getting into something crazy like meteorite stuff. Yeah, or... but uh, let's, just say, let's just say going up to M390 and uh, carbon fiber or titanium. And that, okay, let's say the max is probably $50, you know, raw materials, okay? That's where you start at. Then, yeah. you, then you come into labor, cost of uh, keeping the lights on, cost of uh, advertising, all that stuff. Okay, then you're adding more money. So that those those all start to pile up, and then you get X price. Now sometimes it's way more than you know it should be, but a lot of times it it boils down to how much you like that knife. You know, like. Sometimes it, it just the, the price is justified with the QC and the materials and, you know, uh, having a, another custom knife maker, you know, that is also getting paid on that design. To me, there's so much more to it than just, you know, 
that knife is expensive. <laughs> right. I, the, and that's, that's kind of the point that I try to get across. Even in the production world, it's time. Uh, time, labor, all that ad stuff and everything. But no one wants to talk about that. So just the time in the mill, the tooling, the uh, abrasives. You know, this knife here that Seth and I made, and, and this knife has, I don't know, probably 30 hours in it. So between two of, with two of us. So that's 60 hours worth in yeah. making this knife. And the actual bill of materials for this knife, I mean, that, that piece of carbon fiber is kind of expensive. So we're going to say 35, 40 bucks, maybe a little more. The pivots are a little bit expensive. So maybe 50. Yeah. As far as the bill of materials go, but there's 60 hours plus the tooling, plus the abrasives. Plus all the stuff we do to uh, to let people know that our knives are out there. Marketing, if you want to call it that. Uh, so a knife has got a <laughs> lot more money in it than the bill of materials. And I, I have a hard time. You know, you know, people, one of the things you guys tell us in the comment comments there. And I'll get to the engine here in just a second, Kevin. And uh, Oaken, you have a great night, man. Yeah, we appreciate that, Oaken. He said uh, he was very glad we did this tonight. Yeah, and then I completely lose my train of thought. Oh, blade steels. Everyone throws a fit about blade steels, and it just drives me nuts. You know, whenever I go to buy a knife, if I'm buying a high end knife, let's say this Leong Ma Eraser for production, that's pretty high end. I think these are like four or five hundred dollars, and uh, this and most of Leong's knives have S35 VN in them. And I'll do a video and there'll be like six, eight, 10, 20 comments about, oh, it's only got S35 VN in it. Oh, uh, what? It's a Riot knife and they've done a lot, they spent a lot of time and a lot of materials to make these things. And, uh, and it, S35 VN is fine. <laughs> You know, it's kind of like S30V and S35VN are kind of like if I'm going to be spending more than a couple hundred bucks or so, you know, that's kind of the floor. But, uh, and then the other thing kills me is like a lot of these custom makers will do uh, ABEL or this, uh, all this newer one, the Damascus, I can't think of what it's called, which are pretty much equivalent to CPM 154, but they shine up real good. It's uh, easier to get them to mirror polish. Yeah. But if you were going to use it in a user knife, they're not all, I mean, they're not, well, they're exactly what they are. They're, you know, a step or two above VG10 or right in there with CPM 154. But it's okay to have those steels in a $2,000 knife and somebody wants to complain about S35VN and a $350 knife. It confuses me, man. Yeah. I, I think and, and, uh, more people need to weigh in the complete picture than just a steal or just, you know, think about more than that. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I agree. It's it's hard for the the casual knife nut, I guess, to really see all that. And guys, I'm trying to get this engine out here. It's been asked about again. Uh, the engine, we went over this a little bit earlier. But uh, I've got... I got the drop point out, too. Okay, I'll pop over to you here in just a second. Of all these small knives, there are two that so far are my favorite until the Roxy gets here. And that is the clip point of the engine is uh, second. The Goblin is still first. That yep. This is this... Uh, as Nico said earlier, it's got this natural in-hand feel whenever you've got your finger in that choil, and it's just, it's hard to beat. However, this has a more hand-filling feel to it, and I just love that little clip point blade on it. I think you could use a, a, a back, somewhat of a back choil behind the flipper tab. That's just the one thing I think it could use. Yeah, it could, but I, I kind of like the little squareness to it because, you know, it fills the hand good. It's easy to find in your pocket, and there's nothing really sticking out on it anywhere. It's like having a pack of Juicy Fruit in your pocket. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm going to swap the camera over to you, and you can show the one you've got there, Nick. Yeah, I have the uh, – they call this just a drop drop point version of it. Um, it kind of has like that uh, sleesh, sleesh buoy style blade in my eyes, and it also has that uh, Anno – I forgot what Thai Spectrum, I think they're calling or something like that. Yeah, Spectrum TI Spectrum, or Thai Spectrum. Yeah, Spectrum TI, which is it's a cool finish. Uh, you know, I've seen Kaiser do that back way back when they first started. Um, I think it's it's cool. I like how they did this. It almost looks like a uh, integral backspacer right here. I mean, but it's really just two pieces. But it gives you a different flair, like. You can have, uh, you can anode this whatever color you want, and usually whatever one you got, this is the same color as a pocket clip, as you notice, like that. And there's a lot of cool details on here. I like the little windows they give you that match up with the blade. Um, and like yeah. I said, I, I always like that full, like in in the hammer grip. This thing is is ungodly uh, comfortable and. It's not really one that I'd really hold in the hammer grip. I, I usually hold it back like this, mm. you know, to get better slicing at it. But just a cool overall, overall knife. I like this size knife. I mean, I got tons of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to pop back over to the other one. I want to show them that the way that backspacer works. Yeah, go ahead. And, and what is cool here about this little engine, and it's kind of a neat thing or sneaky thing that Best Tech's done that this is a slab of carbon fiber, standard thickness. I'd have to measure it to tell you what thickness, but they've ran it through the mill. They've got it all uh, shaped and contoured. And then they run this piece of titanium. This is your backspacer. And they run it out on the front and it makes for a really cool look. And secondly, it makes them not have to buy ridiculously expensive titanium because as a titanium or not titanium, but uh, carbon fiber, because this thickness of carbon fiber I'm not going to say it's reasonable cost, but it's not horrible. But as you get thicker and thicker with the carbon fiber, and then you're going to have to mill a bunch of it out like they would if this piece wasn't here. Oh, yeah. my goodness. That would have, that would make this knife cost a lot. I mean, it's already 150 bucks. It would bring it up over probably over $200 just because of milling out that piece of carbon fiber or purchasing yeah. it, not the milling, but purchasing it. Yeah, the only only other thing they would they could have did was standoffs, but I think that would have detracted from the design a good bit. It would have made it look a lot more plain. Well, yeah, and it gives it that that other look. You got the carbon fiber to going down through there, but then you got that little splash of color. Whether it's even just a gray, it's a splash of color there, which comes out really good. I tell you another thing that I like a, a lot, and close yours up and look through your window. I like that mechanical look in between those window panes you have when it's closed up, where you can see the end of the edge termination. If you're holding it with the flipper facing up, turn it around, Zell. Okay, it you're Dana. on camera. You're on camera right oh, I'm now. Sorry. Okay, like this. Hold it like this. And if you're holding it like this, you're looking through there. You see, I, I like how you see the the blade right here. It just it's like a window. Through oh, the yeah. thing. It just looks cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I always look look in these little details of the knife just to make, you know, because you have so many different, you know, designs out there that it's got, you got to have something different. And I love seeing something different. Yeah, I do too. I mean, it's, <sighs> there's only so many ways you can shape a knife that is going to fit in a person's hand. Yeah, And, you know, you can, and, and I hate this. I, I see this all the time on the videos and everywhere else. Well, this looks like that. Okay. Sometimes I have taken those things apart and said, okay, <clears throat> if I wanted to make this mechanism, this pivot system or something look different, how would you do it? And sometimes you can't. It's yeah. just what it's going to end up looking like as far as shapes go. Now, of course, you can do different finishes and different milling or whatever on the handles. But a lot of times the shape is just going to be what it is. You know, that's why there's so many, uh, so many of these. Yeah. I mean, it, it's really hard to, to mess with it and, and other shapes too. But, uh, you know, there's several knives out there that have a similar shape 
to this guy. I mean, Leong went in and put this little hook back here in it, but there's so many knives that have that same shape to the handle and similar blade shapes. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at the comments. Uh, is there, what do you, I don't know how far we are right now to say if we can look at the comments and answer a few more questions. And if you want, we could wrap it up if you want. I, I don't want to get too long. Yeah, we better do that. Now, one question. Yeah, we need probably about another six minutes or so and we probably need to wrap up. Uh, one of the questions I saw there in the comments was second thing that you have a bunch of or kind of collect for EDC. Uh, I don't really have a lot of that stuff. I mean, I've got three or four watches and, you know, those are kind of expensive and stuff. So I don't have a bunch of that. Uh, I ha am, whenever I can buy a pin at a reasonable price, uh, I kind of like some of these pins. Now I won't buy some two or $300 pin because I'll end up losing it. <laughs> but the rest of the stuff I carry from IDC is kind of set. I carry Olight flashlights, uh, 58 millimeter Swiss army knives. Now I did buy a new one here. The LT trading had the, the warthog thing, but, uh, a, a lot of my EDC is kind of fixed except for the knife. And it's, it's a thing where over time I've come down to things that I like to have on me. And if I go and I try to swap it out for something else, it just upsets me. And I don't, you know what I mean? Yeah, that, that's exactly how I am too. Like, I, I swap out just to swap, you know, just to try to make it different. I used to be a wallet whore, and that used to be another obsession of mine. But um, thanks to Doss Offenmeer and the gun deck, I'm no longer – I'm a, I'm a, I'm a one-wallet one man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just because it was a different product at the time when it first came out, and it's still an amazing product. But other than that, you know, I and I like all the other gear, but I don't buy it as readily. I always have a flashlight on me. Uh, I usually have um, either one of these um, Razor, right, like the Rut Rexford or that TI design, or um, uh, the Gerber, the Gerber one. Just I usually have some sort of tool and. Usually my Alox uh, Mini Champ is on me at all times, um, but other than flashlights, uh, I'm not a. I can't. I used to get into the watches, but since my accident, um, I've, I've been wearing this uh, Apple Watch just because of the soft band, and I kind of like the Apple Watch. Um, and I like leather goods. I mean, I'm I'm a leather. I like leather. I think it's just it's there's something about it. <laughs> okay, somebody asked what we generally carry when we're not reviewing things. All right, so that is a tricky question. Yeah, and Eric. and I can go. I can say this, and I don't have them all out here. I've got some of them. If Leong Ma has something that's in the three three and a half inch or larger that I have, I carry these a lot. Since Hinderer went to the Gen 6, I've been carrying that a lot. I have an SMF that some of you guys have probably seen, and I carry that guy a lot. And if I'm not carrying those things, I'm carrying one of our prototypes or something that we've handmade for Todd Knife and Tool. Uh, I almost always have a goblin or an imp on me, and... It, it seems perennial, and I guess that's how Swiss Army stays in business. But every dead gum one of us carries a 58 millimeter or was it a 60 some, 70 some millimeter yeah, Swiss I don't, Army I don't knife? Remember. Uh, the, like that. Yeah, the slightly bigger one than this. And, you know, so this one or one like this, a Rambler, is always in my pocket. Uh, if I forget it, I feel like I'm lost. So if there's one EDC item that always goes with me, it's a 58 millimeter Swiss Army knife, which is just, I know, not exciting, but that's what it is. Yeah, on on screen I got mine too. Okay, there we go. Nick's up. Yeah, if if I'm not carrying, 
or even if I am carrying uh, some blades for review, I'm just gonna tell you all right now, I will ride deep. You can ask Zell. <laughs> oh yeah, I do the same. I I always at least have two knives, mainly because of the reviewing aspect. But um, I'm usually whatever, depending on the shards I got on, if they can fit more, and I, and depending on what I'm carrying. But this is the lineup. Whenever I, you know, if I want to just carry just my, you know, regular carry knives and you know, I don't have anything on the review table, which is not usually the, 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 something that goes on. But this is probably, you know, and if you've watched my video on, you know, one knife for everything, this knife so far, this is, has, has been probably the one in the pocket the most, my um, millet torrent. And the smoke, it's another, just a great, both of them, the tor I mean, the uh, smoke is such a slim, small footprint knife, and you still have that full size blade, and it's very lightweight, super smooth, and it has that fidgetability with that front flipper. Um, it it's an excellent knife, and I've been getting more and more fond of the Power Three. This isn't my favorite. My Rex 45 is my favorite, even though I love this. I love the peel ply on here. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about I might swap the blades because I, you know, I love I love the peel ply, and I love that Rex. So I might swap the S90 and those two. I mean, just it, it not like it really matters. And then <laughs> um, the Busker. Only reason the busker wasn't higher is because right now uh, I'm going to be sending this one back to Eugene and he's going to be making me another one almost identical with um, probably a blasted finish with the same type of anno, everything the same just with texture because he did like a mirror polish on this before and man, but that good thing's dexterity. so good looking. Well, what he's going to do, we talked about it and what he's going to do is restore this one and sell it as a uh, um, used knife. But mm -hmm. I mean, it's still going to, you know, whatever. He's going to make it brand new again, and he's going to make me another one. Another one. Cause I, I was like, I know you, he, he told me, he's like, straight up, he's like, I, I put a lot of hours in that knife. <laughs> he's like, so I'll probably just make you another one. I was like, that's, that's fine. <laughs> you know, I, I would, I didn't want to, like, I didn't even want to ask him because I knew how much time he had in this knife. Yeah, I, I hear you. Yeah, I forgot a couple, and somebody asked about one here. We'll get through that real quick, and then we're going to have to get off here, guys. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah I gotta go we got this kids. <laughs> TI Medford. This one's in 3V, and I, I just got this from Greg at Blade Show West. Had a nice conversation with Greg, and I'm actually, and I understand all the drawbacks of the Praetorian, but I am actually enjoying this uh, Genesis size model. And the a one quick of, question for you. Why yeah. are you talking about that one? That one looks incredibly smooth. Is it a lot smoother than the production? Oh, wow, yes. Because I remember handling that blade, and I was like, damn, these things are smooth as hell. Yeah, it is super smooth. Once the detent ball made its track in the in the 3V, yeah. uh, it was. it's just super smooth. Now, it's not fall shutty or any of that kind of yeah, stuff. I wouldn't want that thing to fall shut. Yeah, I like my digits. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. But uh, it's super smooth. There was no lock stick from the start, and it is under twenty thousandths behind the edge on the flat. Damn. Now it just under twenty thousandths, but it and it cuts. That's the crazy thing. I know it's got that short grind, but it cuts in one ninety blade stock. But it cuts. And the last thing you brought up, you know, the secondary knife that whenever you're reviewing, I almost yeah. always carry. It's not this one, but I carry a UTX eighty five. Perfect because, knife for that. Because it's so small and thin, and you can just stick it in a pocket and forget about it. Yeah. And as long as I don't leave the state with it, that could be a problem. <laughs> Anyhow, guys, uh, we well, are going to tell them. Wait, before you get, let's okay. just tell them. Somebody said, "I uh, hope y'all do this." And we're we're now don't quote us on this, but we're going to try to do this. What Zell at least once a month, or if not more. Oh um, well, yeah, we're going to. We're going to try to do it more often than that. This uh, late knife with Zell and Staza, the, we're going to try to make it a regular thing as often as we can get away with it. Uh, the only thing is, is you're going to have to watch Instagram. You're going to have to watch our uh, the community tab on YouTube 
because whenever we have an opportunity to do it, meaning that uh, the dogs and my wife are doing whatever they're doing and I've got free time and for ne- or for Staza, same thing. And, you know, sometimes we have to send his dog to the neighbor's <laughs> yeah, I really, I really have done that before. <laughs> <laughs> Cute little dude, but man, he can make some noise. Yes, indeed. Uh, but yeah, we <clears throat> we want to do this as often as we can get away with for you guys. And if you'll watch Instagram, we didn't do it this time, but it's been great. We've averaged 40 or more viewers the majority of the show, and it's been great. We appreciate it. And we want to keep doing this for you guys, just having a conversation about knives, watching the chat, and just having a good time. And uh, also, don't forget, guys, we've got this giveaway coming up. We are gathering everything up, and we will be there soon. And, Nick, did you drop out on me? Um, I'm on low, low battery. Okay. So, guys, we got to go. Don't forget about the giveaway, and uh, we will see you next time. See you guys later.